Bonjour, Tavi Baisley here from French Speak. And in this video, I want to talk to you about false cognates. These are what we call faux amis. And we have words that look very similar in the two languages, but they don't actually match. Their meaning vary, even though they really look like you could assume that one means the other. Let me show you my list. These are the ones I've collected over the last few weeks from students because I see the mistakes happening. Voilà, voilà. Alors, attention au faux avis. Be wary of or watch out for les faux amis, false friends. The grammatical word is false cognates. And if you Google them, you will find much longer lists. These are the ones that I've selected because they're the most common ones I hear. Alors, en anglais, quand vous pensez au mot actually, when you think of the word actually, you want to make a sentence for it. Quite often, students use the French actuellement. Mais ce n'est pas, ce n'est pas actuellement. En anglais, actually. En français, en fait. En fait. Because actuellement actually means currently or at present. So, ce mot français veut dire currently or at present. D'accord? So, don't use actually, actuellement for actually. Use en fait. And when you do mean currently or at present, then use actuellement. Actuellement. En anglais, if you think of the word sensible, en français, Ce n'est pas sensible, so sensible, ce n'est pas sensible, c'est raisonnable. En français, raisonnable. That's someone who's sensible. When we say someone is sensible en français, ce mot est sensitive en anglais. So, if you hear someone call someone sensible, we don't mean sensible. We mean that they're sensitive. Sensible. En anglais, the more phrase, so a phrase, we also have in French une phrase, but une phrase means a sentence, une phrase, a sentence. When you mean a phrase, en français, il faut dire une expression, une expression, d'accord? Une expression. En anglais, le mot a lecture, c'est une conférence, une conférence. Ce n'est pas une lecture. Une lecture, en, fran- en anglais, c'est a reading. So when you hear the word une lecture in French, we're not talking about a lecture, we're talking about a reading. D'accord? Ensuite, en anglais, quand vous pensez au mot medicine, en français, on dit des médicaments. Des médicaments. Je vais à la pharmacie pour Acheter des médicaments. I'm going to the pharmacy to buy some medicine. We use médicaments. We do have a word that looks a bit more like medicine, and it's un médecin. But that's the doctor, the actual person. D'accord? Un médecin is a doctor. En anglais, le mot to prevent is not prévenir. Prévenir en français is to warn. Prévenir. Il faut prévenir la police. We have to warn the police. Il faut prévenir la police. That's to warn. To say to prevent, we use the verb empêcher. Empêcher. En anglais, the verb to resume something is not résumer. Résumer en français, c'est to sum up, to add things up, to summarize them. Résumer. When you want to say to resume, en français, il faut dire recommencer. Recommencer. So we have recommencer, which means to resume, and we have résumé, which means to summarize or to sum up. En anglais, when you use the word a check, en français, c'est un contrôle. Un contrôle. Ce n'est pas un chèque. We do have un chèque. It's a check. So if you mean it with this spelling, and again, US, UK spelling will be different for this one. 
but a check as in an inventory check or a passport check will be un contrôle, un contrôle. Un check will be a check, a bank check. This is one I hear a lot when students want to say eventually, they'll use eventuellement. But eventuellement means possibly. There's a possibility of something happening. So it's eventuellement, possibly. If you do mean eventually, you need to use finalement, finalement. He, fi he eventually moved out. Finalement, il a déménagé. En anglais, if you want to use the word fortunate, you can't link it to the French word fortuné. Fortuné en français, ça veut dire beaucoup d'argent. Well off. Someone who is fortunate will be chanceux. We'll have lots of luck. And we use chance as a noun and chanceux, masculine adjective to describe someone or a situation. And chanceuse, chanceux, chanceuse lucky or fortunate. Whereas fortuné, il est fortuné, c'est un roi. It's a king. He's well off. He has a lot of money. He has a fortune. Two more. En anglais, the word habit is not un habit. Ce n'est pas un habit. Un habit is an item of clothing. A habit en français is une habitude. Une habitude. And many of you will know the expression comme d'habitude. Or the song comme d'habitude. As usual, as normal. Comme d'habitude. And finally, making sure I didn't skip any. En anglais, the word to contemplate, to contemplate, pardon, is not contempler. Contempler is je contemple les étoiles. For example, I'm just gazing at something. To contemplate in English is the French envisager. Envisager. J'envisage les opportunités. J'envisage les options. Um, you're taking them into consideration. You're contemplating them. In French, contempler, you're just gazing at something. So the meaning is a little bit different. Voilà. Voilà les faux amis pour cette collection. I hope you can pick maybe two or three and start using them correctly. Whether it's the French matching the English or the English finally matching the right French. Let me know below which one was new to you or helpful. And I'll do more of these videos if that's helpful. Merci. Au revoir.